What's going on guys? Tower number nine with another video here. This time I'm playing Leia against a uh, against a Vader deck and we're both using some of the new stuff. This is a similar Leia build to the one that I was showing uh, earlier with the new Wedge Antilles and Bright Hope. So my opponent leads off this game by playing a Seasoned Shore Trooper, one of the new cards. It is a 2-3 Imperial Trooper that becomes a 4-3 once you have six resources. I play a C-3PO and I guess three end up hitting with an Admiral Akbar. so that's some nice little card advantage early on in the game. So Season Shore Trooper there, just highlighting that card. While you control six more resources, it gets plus two, plus zero. Also some of my favorite art in the game thus far. Really cool looking card, and I think a pretty strong one as well. So, you know, starting out, paying two for a two, three on the first turn isn't terrible. You know, it's like a, it's a decent, decent fighting unit, and then if you do draw it later in the game, it's kind of scaled up and becomes a lot more relevant. So I think, I think it's a pretty solid card. Um... Right now, of course, I feel like I'm in a better spot with this C-3PO, but we'll have to see what my opponent does here. So first uh, first is just going to be an attack into the base for two damage. I play a Wing Leader, one of my favorite cards in the game, giving two experience tokens to C-3PO. When played, give two experience tokens to another friendly rebel unit. So C-3PO buffed up now. And that is going to hopefully allow me to just attack and take out this trooper. However, my opponent gives the trooper the fallen lightsaber, so that is a plus three, plus three. And so now his trooper is a five, six, while my C-3PO is a four, is a three, six. Not what I most want to see. I think I end up, um, I end up deciding, you know, I need to, um, well, first I need to fix the base life total since we both started at 30 instead of 25 by mistake. Um, but then... I think I, I decide I want to try and take down this trooper rather than uh, rather than going for pressure on the base since he has a lot more damage there. I hit the trooper for three. See, three PO takes five, and I guess uh, I guess something that that isn't. So now my my C three PO is close to death, but can will be able to trade with that trooper with a second attack. My hope is that I'm going to be able to clear that guy out. Um, Probably with my with my next attack with C-3PO as I really do not want that um, I really do not want that buff trooper sticking around Especially if my opponent gets to six resources and he gets a further plus two attack. That's just really something I'd rather not see Looking at my cards here. I'm not entirely sure what I want to resource. So Overwhelming barrage is a very strong card, but it costs two more in this deck because I'm playing it out of aspect so it's actually a seven cost. Vanquish is a strong removal card, but I don't know if my opponent is running things that Vanquish is good against necessarily. I end up deciding I'm gonna resource the Vanquish. Uh, my opponent has a really strong play here using the Energy Conversion Lab to bring out a Super Laser Technician and Ambush C-3PO. This is a super high value play because, because not only does he remove the threat to his trooper, he also is going to uh, put that, put that super laser technician into play as a readied resource. I then play General Dodonna so that he cannot use Vader's ability to ping off my wing leader. So General Dodonna is a 4-4 four four that gives um, that gives all friendly rebel units plus one plus one. The wing leader can normally be killed by Vader's ping ability. Vader can spend one resource and exhaust to deal one damage to an enemy unit and one damage to the base. But Dodonna there giving the wing leader plus one plus one means that he is, the wing leader is now out of range to be killed like that. My opponent instead plays a snow trooper lieutenant and sends the buffed up trooper into the base for a lot of damage. I'm going to use my security complex to put a shield token onto Dodonna and then I'm going to swing with my wing leader for three damage. So in this situation, I'm not altogether happy with the scenario, I'll tell you the truth. My opponent has the initiative, and that buffed trooper is going to be able to hit my base again. In fact, he's going to get to six resources this turn. Uh, I haven't been able to remove that trooper yet, and as a result of that, the trooper is going to be able to hit my base actually for eight, which is going to leave me on quite low life. Now on the plus side, I do have multiple restore units here in hand, so I have uh, Admiral Akbar the in the restored arc, both have restore one. Additionally, Kanan Jarrus has a restore based ability. Um, I removed the wrong amount of life there. Because that guy can actually hit me for uh, that guy can actually hit me for seven. I think I said eight earlier, but it is, I believe, seven. 
So I am not, yeah, because it's two plus two plus three, so seven. So I am not in a not in a great spot here, just in terms of the life totals already getting very low. On the plus side, I can remove, um, I'm gonna deploy Leia. On the plus side, I can remove the trooper there this turn and hopefully won't have to deal with that anymore. My plan is to deploy Leia and then play the uh, Admiral Akbar and use his ability to deal three damage to the trooper, which will remove him outright. Additionally, with Leia out there, if my opponent deploys Vader, I can now kill Vader immediately um, because Leia can attack into Vader for four, uh, for five actually with Dodana, and then Dodana, uh, Leia's ability will allow Dodana to finish the attack and clear out Vader. So I play Akbar when played, you may deal damage to a unit equal to the number of units you control in that arena. Um, in this case, that's three. My opponent plays a resupply, which will allow him to get Vader out this turn, but I have the answer prepared. Um, in this situation, I have a, several options. So I, what I end up doing is I'm gonna swing in with the wing leader for three more damage. Um, and then I can potentially play out R2 or I can play out the restored arc, um, both of which would be quite useful. So R2 would allow me to do some deck thinning here, whereas the restored arc would be a, another threat in the space arena, which is currently kind of underdeveloped. And that point of restore would potentially be useful for digging me out of this dangerous position in terms of life totals. Um, I'm hoping my opponent does deploy Vader here because I can then take him out, but he ends up deploying another one of those troopers instead. I deploy R2. Um, looking back on it, I think this was a blunder. I think it would have been better to deploy the restored arc rather than R2 here. Um, I'm not entirely sure why I went with R2. Uh, Vader pings the shield off of Dodana. So I have two options here. One of them is that I can pass. The other one is that I can attack and clear his ground units. I end up deciding that I'm gonna pass because I don't want Vader to come out and really destroy me here. <laughs> um, but I'm in a lot of trouble right now. Uh, if my opponent does deploy Vader, I'm very happy with that, but he takes the initiative instead, which is gonna give him more of a chance to try and clear out my units here. We'll see whether or not uh, whether or not that succeeds. I do see home one, which is really strong, but I'm probably not gonna be able to, probably not necessarily gonna be able to get it out in time. My hope is that next turn, I'm gonna be able to play that overwhelming barrage and wipe his board, and in the meantime, I won't get overwhelmed and killed, but it's hard to say whether or not that's actually gonna happen. The key thing here is that I'm really hoping my opponent doesn't have strong removal type stuff for Leia and Dodana. I kind of need those strong units on the board to threaten Vader when he comes in, but I think that it's kind of a forlorn hope given the circumstances. It seems pretty likely that he's gonna be able to clear me out this turn. Um, he can also push a bunch of damage to the base, and indeed we see him lead off with an overwhelming barrage. Uh, so that's going to give that unit plus two, plus two. Uh, so he does six damage to Leia, which actually doesn't kill her um, because Leia has plus one defense from General Dodana. So in, in some ways, this is potentially a mistake that leaves me in a relatively decent position. So now, but that guy is now plus two, so he has six attack. I have to clear that guy or I immediately lose the game. Um, so in this situation, I have to attack the I have to attack that snow trooper or that shore trooper with Leia because she's strength five on the attack, thanks to raid. So I do that and clear the shore trooper, but the opponent is now in a pre, in a pretty favored position because I no longer have something that can kill Vader when he comes in. So he can now use his other units to win the game. And unfortunately, Leia's ability to have another unit attack after her only applies if she is uh, only applies if uh, she survives the attack. If it applied all the time, I would actually now uh, I would actually be in a much better position because I could have used Akbar to clear this snow trooper lieutenant before he attacked. Um, but because Leia is defeated with that attack into the shore trooper, I can no longer, I can still use Akbar to clear the snow trooper and heal one, but the problem is now Vader can come and hit my base for five and win the game. Um, and I don't have an answer to, uh, to Vader. If I had been able to have Akbar attack before the Snow Trooper Technician, I would have two more life on my base, at which point the situation might be more favorable, though I'm still not sure I'd be able to clear Vader in time for the next turn. Uh, so what I do there is I attack with my wing leader and I just hope that my opponent messes up and my opponent doesn't mess up and uses Vader to clear the base and win. So. That was a defeat for the. Uh, that was a defeat for my Leia vigilance build, which is kind of a. It's it's a little bit space focused as a build with a lot of fighters and stuff and various buffs. <clears throat>
We got Wedge, we got Dodonna. I think I'm running both the Restored Arc and the Alliance X-Wing, and my hope is to push stuff through in space, but not always something that you can accomplish. Okay, so going into the ne uh, next round here, we're going to try again. This time I have a strong early space presence, so I'm going to be able to do potentially Restored Arc into a Wing Leader, which I consider to be a really good play. Uh, let's see if I can do better in the rematch here. So for two resources, I lead off with the Restored Arc. Honestly, one of my favorite cards. Two cost, two, three uh, space unit with Restore one. It is a Vigilance and Heroism unit. My opponent once again leads off with the Season's Short Trooper, same guy that he was using in the previous game. Two cost, two, three, and gets plus one, or I'm sorry, plus two attack if you have more than six resources, or six or more resources, rather. So I'm once again going to be able to do a wing leader into uh, in, uh, to buff my first turn play. This is a really strong this is a really strong combination that I think a lot of heroic decks are going to want to do. In general, if you play a turn one unit that's pretty solid and then back it up with a wing leader, that is a really good way to uh, build up some advantage. My opponent plays General Veers, three cost three three, who gives all Imperial units you control plus one plus one. My uh, buffed Restored Arc swings in for 4, my opponent hits me for 3, thanks to Veers. I only remove 2 HP at once, and then I'm like, wait a minute, Veers is here, and remove the other one. Okay, so in this situation, my space arena is very strong, but my opponent has the advantage in the ground arena. So one thing that I could do here is I could play Kanan, another thing that I could use, do is use Takedown to kill Veers immediately. I end up deciding I'm going to play Kanan, I think he's a pretty strong unit. So he's a 4 cost, 4-5, four, and he is a rebel, and he also has the force trait. And when he attacks, the opponent has to mill a card from their deck, which is to say discard a card from the top of their deck for each Spectre unit you control. And uh, for every aspect that is among the cards milled, you heal one life. So for instance, in this situation, I only have the one Spectre. So if he were to attack and clear out a... Um, let's say that he were to attack and clear out a one aspect card, that would be um, just one life, but if you were to remove like a Force Choke, which has two aspects, I would repair two, two HP. So I use Leia's ability there to attack with both my ships at the same time, kind of a tempo advantage, and also means that I'm going to be able to get that going. My opponent uses Vader's ability to ping off the... Uh, or I thought he was going to ping off the Wing Leader, but he actually damages the Restored Arc here. And this strongly signals that my opponent has open fire. So my restored arc has 5 HP with the experience buff, and my opponent using the uh, Vader's ability on it means that he wanted to bring it down to 4 HP, which strongly signals that he has an open fire on the way, because otherwise this is kind of a dubious play. Um, you would want to kill the wing leader and remove a unit uh, from the board completely, especially since there's a risk that I'll play Dodonna or some other buff and get the wing leader out of range of that ping. So I know that my opponent is probably going to try to use open fire to clear me. So what I'm going to try to do is attack with the uh, restored arc using my first action so that I can get value before I potentially get cleared. Um, and so what I do here is I use Leia's ability to have Callus defeat Veers, so that damages... Uh, uh, that damaged him by three, and indeed my opponent, so my opponent I think didn't realize my action was still going on and actually tries to play the open fire here. Um, and so I'm just saying in chat, hang on, my action's still in progress, you need to mill first and then I get my second attack. So Kanan, um, yeah, so Kanan is going to mill a card, it is a uh, Blizzard Assault ATST, which has two icons, so I heal two. Um, and then I get my second attack using Leia's ability, so she allows you to attack with one rebel unit and then attack with another. And I'm going to use that to attack with the restored arc, hitting the enemy base for four and healing my base for one before my opponent can play that open fire. So that's a, um, that's a situation where Leia's ability got some significant advantage. Not only was I able to clear Veers before he did anything that turn, I was also able to get the restored arc going. So my opponent then is going to play, uh, is, th is then going to use the Super Laser Technician to clear Kanan. I play a uh, Vigilant Honor Guard, 
um, which is a five cost four six that has sentinel as long as it is not damaged now to be fair i'm not going to be able to keep that undamaged state very long with vader on the board here but it is a unit that at the very least is a big body that can cause my opponent some problems my opponent plays a copy of resupply a card that just becomes a resource when played and that means that he's going to be up at seven resources two turns early and he can actually deploy vader here um, I'm going to shield my. Uh, I'm going to shield my vigilant honor guard using the uh, using the um, security complex, which is my base. I have my wing leader swing in for two more damage. My opponent has now deployed Vader. My vigilant. Uh, my Vigilant Honor Guards are shielded, so they sh would be able to survive, but my opponent plays out Vader's Lightsaber, a two-cost attachment that gives plus three, plus one, and if you play it on Vader, it allows you to deal four damage to, I think it has to be a ground unit, so he uses that to clear the shield. Now Vader can, can kill the Vigilant Honor Guard in one attack, which is really uh, not, not optimal for me. Um, and he... Uh, and he goes in, kills the Vigilant Honor Guard, and Vader's ability to deal two damage to another unit is going to come into play here as he deals two damage to Leia. Um, I am going to, so I have to think about what my options here. I could use Leia to, I could use Leia to hit Vader for four, but I would rather just hit the base for four, bring my opponent closer to losing the game. Um, if Leia survives, which obviously she won't, uh, I can have Leia attack and bring one of the other units in to attack with her to win. Um, and then uh, my opponent is likely going to use that Shore Trooper to clear out Leia, um, which then makes it so that we will both we we end up trading there. We're both defeated, but Leia is no longer on board to threaten to threaten that. However, I now take the initiative, so he needs to clear one of my space units, and he plays the open fire from earlier to clear the restored arc. The reason I said he needs to clear one of my space units in that situation is that if he did not do so, I would have been able to use Leia's ability to attack with both of them as the first action, which would then deal six damage and win the game. So Leia's ability to kind of push in a more aggressive tempo is quite relevant here. Um, my first action, I actually play a takedown to clear Vader. Uh, I don't want Vader to hit my base for 8 and kill my unit in one attack. Defeat a unit with 5 or less remaining HP, he had exactly 5, so take down getting big value there. And with Vader cleared, uh, when your leader is defeated, it goes, uh, as a unit, it goes to back to its leader state, but it goes back exhausted. And because it went back to the leader state exhausted, he's not going to be able to use Vader's ping ability to clear my wing leader this turn. Um, so that's a useful benefit for me. My opponent plays a basic trooper here. And I swing into his base for two more damage. Uh, the That is a first legion snow trooper, two cost, two, three. And if it's attacking a damaged unit, it gets plus two attack and overwhelm. My opponent takes the initiative, so kind of a weak turn for my opponent, uh, fortunately for me. And I play a, an alliance X-wing, which now means that once again, my opponent is sort of in check. He has to clear one of my uh, space units in order to prevent me from immediately winning with Leia's ability. And perhaps unbeknownst to him, I have a fleet lieutenant in hand, which means that I can use that to have one of them swing in for four. So he actually needs to clear both of them with one move, which he's not going to be able to do. He has a snow trooper lieutenant swing in. Uh, propel his First Legion Snowtrooper in for four, and then I have Leia's ability to have both my fighters attack the enemy base for four combined and take the win. So now we're one and one, and we're going to move into a third game here with these uh, with these decks. These have been interesting games. We also played... Um, we also played some rounds earlier. I think we've maybe both made some changes to the decks since those initial rounds, but we had um, we played some other games of this, and I thought these were good and close games and interesting to interesting to commentate. Let's see here. I end up deciding I'm going to mulligan this hand. It has an Alliance X-Wing that I can use for a start, but a bunch of the other cards are expensive, and I would rather have more options kind of in the mid-game in my opening hand. Uh, depending on how many 1 and 2 cost units you have, you may find yourself with different degrees of willingness to mulligan a like 
playable but mediocre initial hand. Uh, in general, the more one and two costs you have, the less risky it is to mulligan um, because you have more of a chance of drawing a turn one play. My opponent leads off with a first legion snow trooper. I play R2D2. My opponent uses Vader's ability to ping and I take the initiative. So one thing that I could do here is I could play the wing leader to buff R2 and then swing R2 in to clear the trooper. Another thing that I could do is I could go with the fleet lieutenant to have R2 clear the trooper immediately and leave me with a 3-3 body. I end up deciding I'm going to do that even though it means I lose R2 because this way the wing I don't have a wing leader on the board that's very vulnerable to being pinged off. I see an alliance X-wing which is kind of a mediocre card so I decide to send that to the bottom of the deck. And I now have the Fleet Lieutenant on the ground arena. My opponent just plays a resupply, though, ramping up, uh, and we will see what happens next. All right, so we have um, my opponent's already up to five resources. Uh, luckily, the um, luckily for me, Vader only deploys at seven, so there's still a little bit of time before he gets his leader in play. I hit his base for three with the Fleet Lieutenant, just a basic play there. My opponent plays Colonel Yularen, two cost, two, three, and uh, when you play a command unit, it repairs your base for one, so he heals one HP to the base. I then play Kanan, the uh, Jedi that I was using in the earlier game, four cost, four, five, and when he attacks, you mill one card from your opponent's deck for each Spectre unit you control. And then if the uh, you you and then you repair one HP from your base for each of the aspect tokens. Then my opponent plays another resupply, ramping up to six resources already. So very heavy ramp from my opponent in this game. Now the downside to all this ramp is it means that I have a really good position in terms of board control. So my my actual developed board is much stronger than my opponent's. But he is going to be able to deploy Darth Vader this turn, the same turn that I deploy Leia. So Vader is going to be able to deploy two turns early here, and that might have a big effect. Let's, let's see how it goes. So looking at my hand here, I do have the initiative, which is really good, because it means that if I deploy Leia, I'm actually going to be able to kill Vader if Vader immediately deploys, because Leia will be able to attack into Vader and then send Kanan into Vader. Now, to be fair, Kanan will be defeated and, and Leia will be left at one life, but it will still clear out Vader before he gets a big result. Uh, I end up deploying Vader he uh, Leia here to make it a threatening situation for Vader. And actually, a little secret here is that if my... I mean, it's not really a secret, but if my opponent defeats Kanan, I would actually still be threatening an immediate kill on Vader. And the reason that I would be threatening that is that I could use my fleet lieutenant to have Va uh, Leia attack at plus two, and then follow up with the ready fleet attendant using Leia's ability. So that would actually also clear Vader. Um, and actually, might be might be better, but I end up going with the Kanan route. So Leia and Kanan defeat Vader. Leia takes five damage. Uh, Kanan is defeated. There is a mill there that is going to remove a, ca a card from my opponent's deck. Ends up being an open fire, and I repair one HP to my base. So Vader made an early appearance, but it didn't last too long as Leia was immediately able to clear him. My opponent then plays a General Veers. I'm going to counter with a General Dodonna. So General Veers, three cost, three three. All Imperial units get pl all friendly Imperial units get plus one plus one. Uh, that puts his Yularen at three four and means that Yularen could take out my fleet lieutenant with an advantageous trade, but I counter with General Dodonna, 4 cost 4-4, four, four, gives all my rebel units plus 1. My opponent, however, sends in the... Um, my opponent, however, sends in the uh, shore trooper unit from earlier, um, a, another copy of it, ambushing with the energy conversion lab to take out my ready unit, and he repairs 1 for playing a command unit with Yularen. Um, however, I, his unit actually also dies because I am buffed by Dodonna. Uh, so then I'm just going to take the initiative, or no, I'm going to shield Dodonna. That's right. Uh, in this deck, Dodonna is kind of a linchpin. Almost all my units are rebels. Maybe all my units are rebels. I don't actually remember. So Dodonna buffs almost everything. And for that reason, putting a shield token on him is a high priority play in order to get some value. My opponent ends up just taking the initiative rather than attacking with Yalaren and we'll see what the first move is here. 
I actually just straight up forget to resource this turn. Uh, this was not an intentional choice. I just legitimately forgot. I would rather have resourced and gone up to six. I could then have played the wing leader and the fleet lieutenant from hand for six total. As it stands, I'm not going to be able to get a... Um, I'm likely not going to be able to get maximum value unless there's a really good target for Vanquish. So in this situation, uh, my opponent trades Yalorin with Leia. Um, and I am going to... Uh, so one thing right now is that Dodonna can just kill Veers and not even take any damage thanks to the shield tokens. That's like a pretty straightforward play. And then I could play Bright Hope, or I could play the Wing Leader and buff Dodonna. My opponent brings out a basic trooper. Um, I am... I'm thinking about what to do here. So I don't want to play Vanquish or Takedown, because that's like an expensive card to use on a basic unit. I end up playing Bright Hope, so 4 cost 2, 6 with Sentinel. When played, you may return a friendly non-leader ground unit to its owner's hand if you do draw a card. However, I'd actually rather not return Dodonna at this phase since he is still the most powerful unit in the ground arena, so I'm sort of just playing this to get a body into the space arena and potentially get some value. My opponent's going to use Vader's ability, I believe, to ping Dodonna here, and this means that Dodonna is now kind of set up for the... Uh, one of the snow troopers to take him out with one attack since the snow troopers get plus two attack against damaged units. Now in this situation I end up drawing two copies of Vigilant Honor Guards. So the Vigilant Honor Guards are potentially a really annoying obstacle for my opponent. So I'm actually going to try and lead off with that which will hopefully preserve Dodonna at least for a bit. So by playing this Vigilant Honor Guard it has Sentinel as long as it's not damaged and as a result of that, those snow troopers, which would be poised to kill Dodonna, instead would have to attack into the Vigilant Honor Guards. Five cost four, six, when the, while this unit is undamaged, it gains Sentinel. So this is a decent card. It has like decent stats for its cost, and the Sentinel ability can be quite annoying. Um, however, Vader has a lot of ways to deal damage, so there's a good chance that he's going to be able to ping that and uh, get, that, get that Sentinel removed. Also, my Leia is exhausted, but that's not correct. It should not be exhausted. Okay, so my opponent plays a maximum firepower here, allowing him to deal four damage with his two troopers combined. And so he initially says that he's going to do the damage to the. Um, he initially says that he's going to do the damage to the uh, vigilant honor guards, but then he says, "Wait a minute, sorry, I'm just going to clear Dodonna." Okay, which which honestly makes more sense there. Um, so he clears out Dodonna using that, even though he isn't able to attack Dodonna directly. I have the Bright Hope uh, transport hit his base for two. He can then use Vader's ability to ping the Vigilant Honor Guards for one and deal one damage to my base. So I lose Sentinel. Additionally, I'm now damaged. I take the initiative. And each of those uh, troopers can now attack for four damage into the Vigilant Honor Guard, also having Overwhelm. So he sends the first one in to soften it up and then sends the second one to kill it and deal three Overwhelm damage. However, I'm overall happy with that because my Vigilant Honor Guard still got a two for one. You know, he had to spend those two troopers to clear the Honor Guard. And so overall, I'm actually pretty happy with that, given the overall state of cards in this game. Um, so right now, the, uh, the Bright Hope Transport is the only unit left on the board, although it is a 6 HP space unit, so it has a lot of toughness left. Um, I play C-3PO and guess 3. It is not a 3. Uh, my opponent plays the mighty Blizzard Assault at, -AT which is a, I believe it's an 8-8 or a 9-9, but I have a Vanquish to just kill it immediately, and that's that's where you see value out of Vanquish. So Vanquish is a 5-cost card that just says defeat a non-leader enemy unit, and in these situations, you know, my opponent played, an, I believe, a 8-cost super unit, but Vanquish just kills it in one hit and leaves me in a favorable position resource-wise. I'm looking at my resource cards there to see what options I'm going to come into in the future. Um, my opponent here plays Colonel Yularen. I'm going to counter with a uh, Fleet Lieutenant to have C-3PO attack Yularen at plus two attack. Um, ends up being uh, guessing three and missing, but I see home one, my most powerful unit, so I'm very happy to see that. My opponent sends in an ATST, a 6-7 with Overwhelm. Um, in this situation, I could play Dodonna, but I actually prefer to get the Vigilant Honor Guards on the board, uh, as their Sentinel is relevant there, and then I'm going to hit the base for two damage with Bright Hope. The Vigilant Honor Guards, the AT, AT will be, or the ATST would be forced to attack them and would not actually overwhelm. I end up deciding not to resource here, which I think is probably bad. I don't know. I, I, I probably should have resourced the Wing Leader because I could then play Home 1 and R2-D2 in the same turn. 
Um, my opponent here is going to bring out a, uh, let's see, this is the Homestead Militia, which is a three cost, three, four. While you control six or more resources, this unit gains Sentinel. So with Sentinel on the field, um, we're now in a situation where the only unit I can play that can immediately wipe out the homestead that I could attack with that would wipe out the homestead militia would be my own honor guard who would then lose sentinel themselves for being damaged. Um, so I'm thinking about what to do here. I'm looking at my discard pile to see what, what I can get if I play home one. One thing I could do here is I could play Dodonna, who would then not only buff my Vigilant Honor Guard such that it would survive an attack from the ATST, it would also enable them. Uh, it would also enable the Fleet Lieutenant to attack into the. Uh, it would also enable the Fleet Lieutenant to attack into the um, Homestead Militia and survive. Uh, I play R2 instead, trying to get the C3PO R2D2 combo going. My opponent plays a standard Death Star Stormtrooper, one cost, three, one, vanilla. I'm going to bring out Dodonna to get that buff going, which will put me into a position where I can potentially get um, where I can potentially get big value from various plays. My opponent pings the Vigilant Honor Guard with Vader. I have the Vigilant Honor Guard clear out his uh, clear out his Homestead Militia. The ATST still has yet to attack and can potentially do some major damage here. Um, I still have a Wing Leader that I can play as well as a few Rebel units of my own. In particular, I still have the um, I still have Bright Hope. Now, in this case, I actually made a misplay there. I should have used Leia's ability to have the Vigilant Honor Guard clear the Homestead Militia and then have C-3PO clear out that trooper. I could have done that with the same action and my opponent wouldn't have had a chance to take out C-3PO. I then play a Wing Leader and buff the Fleet Lieutenant up to a 5-5. My opponent plays Colonel Yularen yet again. Uh, and that is gonna allow a repair of one HP to the base. And then I'm going to have my now buffed Fleet Lieutenant take out the ATST as he is now strength 5 and my opponent has, uh, or he's actually strength 6 with Dodona, and my opponent has a uh, 5 life remaining. I then swing in with the, um, with the Bright Hope Transport for 3 since it is buffed by Dodona. I have, this turn I'm probably going to try to play home 1, which is kind of my ultimate unit in this build, top of the curve. Um, I could also resource the home one and play both Wedge and Kanan, but I think home one itself is, is just higher value, especially because it gets a unit from my discard pile. Uh, my opponent plays um, Agent Callus and trades him with Dodonna. So Agent Callus is a 4-4 with Ambush. And uh, while, when an, a unique unit other than Callus is defeated, you may draw a card. So he has Callus take down uh, Dodonna, which is a trade, but it's a favorable trade for him card advantage-wise because he also draws a card. This time I remember to use my Leia ability, having R2-D2 clear out the... Um, having R2-D2 clear out the Stormtrooper and the Vigilant Honor Guard trade with Yularen. Um, so I am, I'm trying to basically get, get a strong position of board control um, and use that also to prevent my opponent from healing a bunch with Yalarin since he has a lot of command units in this build. Uh, I can now play Rogue uh, or Home 1. I almost said Rogue 1 there. I can now play Home 1. I was sort of looking at my discard pile there to see what we what we have, but home one going to hit the field. One of the strongest units I have, 7-7, seven, seven. it has Restore 2. It gives my whole army Restore 1 and allows me to play a unit at uh, from discard at 3 less. So home one in this case allowing me to play a fleet lieutenant and then the fleet lieutenant sends in the wing leader. My opponent finally pings off that wing leader with Vader but I've already done some damage, and then the Bright Hope Transport does another two damage. It's kind of been steadfastly plugging away at the enemy base. So now I have uh, now I have a pretty strong position with that 7-7 seven, seven and Restore up there. I think I've been forgetting some of the Restore that it grants. Uh, I think I should have restored two life that I may have forgotten, but maybe I, maybe I did it correctly. I'm not sure. The... Um, uh, giving Restore to your whole army is pretty sweet. My opponent gives a Vader's lightsaber to Piet, which makes him a 4-5 and able to defeat my units here in the ground arena. Um, I use Leia's ability to just push through with 10 damage. I'm just going for the face. Uh, and I heal 3 from the Restore 2 on Home 1 and the Restore 1 for the Fleet Lieutenant. Now my... Uh, 
Now my Bright Hope Transport, which has been steadfastly swinging away all game, is poised to potentially uh, attack and destroy the enemy base. But my opponent plays a overwhelming barrage and kills the Bright Hope Transport with his exact six damage. I am no longer in an immediately winning position. But at this point, I have multiple units that will win if they get a chance to attack. And I could play stuff, but I think I actually just end up taking the initiative here. Um, with the reasoning being, my I think my opponent is not going to be able to clear both my Fleet Lieutenant and Home 1. And as a result of that, uh, by taking the initiative here, I guarantee a win. My opponent pings off R2, and his Admiral can kill the Fleet Lieutenant, but Home 1 will still be left to win the game. So my opponent just types GG, and that's going to do it. So ultimately, I went 2-1 in this set of games. Interesting dynamics here with some strong, uh, strong ramp versus the Leia space deck. Ultimately, I was able to get the advantage, but these were some very close games. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll be back later with some more Star Wars Unlimited content.